Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Lefave, and today I'm gonna to show you how I do my simple floral line doodles with black ink, as well as my February bullet journal setup. So I don't know if I'm gonna do many more setup videos. It's a lot of work, and I don't know if this is my area of expertise. It was a lot of fun, but you guys will have to tell me in the comments if this is something you want me to keep up with throughout the year, or you could care less. It's definitely something I love doing for myself as a little creative outlet on the side, but I don't know if filming these are gonna be my jam for the year. But you guys let me know in the comments below. So let's get started with our flower doodle drawings and then right into our February bullet journal setup. Okay, so along with my February setup, I was requested to do a simple floral line drawing tutorial. And because I have the plans of doing some florals in my February setup, I thought I'd do that first. So I'm just gonna show you a couple florals that I like to use. I am gonna be drawing them on just plain paper that I have. I have these different drawing pens. All of them are great. Honestly, whatever you can find works. I have this one by Etcher and it is a zero two size. I have a micron one, which is a size zero three. And then I also have this Tombow mono, mono drawing pen in a size zero one. I don't have a preference or a favorite among these three. They're all kind of similar to be honest. They're all great. So whatever you can find will work. Right now I'm just gonna use this because it's the closest. <laughs> okay, so let's get right into some easy floral doodles. One of the easiest ones I know how to draw is a rose. All we're gonna do for this first one is kind of like these little squiggly spirals. And you're just gonna kind of squiggle your lines like petals going around. And they kind of meet, go up and around, up and around. And they start to get bigger as you go around. Okay, and they'll overlap See how these two overlap the middle of this one? You're just doing kind of like squiggly <laughs> petals and it does not have to be perfect. Okay, you just make them a little bit bigger and longer until you feel it looks right. And that's kind of my rose, okay? You could also, let's do another small one here. I'm gonna start off really small in the center, do little sections overlapping like that like that okay and then for the leaves for these ones I tend to do bigger leaves so let's just start with a line down the center coming up to a point and down, and then sometimes I'll add our little veins like that. We could add another one coming this way. Like that, okay? And that's a rose. Super, super simple, and when they're all kind of clustered together, it looks really good. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is kind of like an anemone. So let's start with our center. I'm gonna just do kind of like this little squiggly center like this. <laughs> and I'll do two different perspectives. Okay, so the first perspective is gonna be from the top down. And we're just gonna do these tiny little lines coming off of that squiggly center. And then you're gonna do tiny little circles at the end. Like that. Now we're just gonna do these petal shapes and I don't want you to think too, too much about it. Um, they come out and they're a little squiggly and then they come back in. So they don't come to a point. They're kind of more rounded, but they can be kind of jagged as well. Let's do another one over here like that. They're a bit more rounded. They can have a bit of a point, some of them like that. Then you're just going to do some in between. And there is your anemone, okay? You could always do some line shading if you want, coming from the center. And try to make it curve with the shape of the petal. So the, the one in the middle is kind of straight, and then the other ones kind of curve out. And these ones that are behind, I tend to make them a bit darker 
where they would be kind of underneath these top petals. And also if you wanted to, you could do little lines coming from the top to make it look like there's little creases. Okay, so that's the top down view. Let's do one that's kind of pointing this way. So let's start with our squiggly center, kind of like an oval shape more than a circle this time. And then because it's pointing this way, the little stem thingies, I'm so technical with my words, are long this way and then you won't see them over here. So let's do those little circles on the end. And then the circles are gonna come right up behind that center like that. And the longest petals are gonna be facing this way. So let's do one with kind of rounded, maybe a little bit of a point coming out this side, this side, and then this is gonna be behind that, but if you couldn't, if you could see it, it would be coming out and it would kind of just round right here. It would be a lot shorter just because of the perspective. Okay, and there you go. Then you can just do a couple more line shadings if you want. But honestly, when it's all together, it does not have to look perfect. And then if you wanted to do the kind of like anemone leaves, you can do these kind of like jagged little pointed leaves like that. Okay, so there is an anemone. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is kind of like a ranunculus. So it's a little similar to our rose. And this is like very, very basic. You're literally just gonna do really tight swirls. And you're just gonna go around in a spiral and try not to make it like a perfect circle. And then make it bigger as you come out and make it squiggly like that. Okay, again, small little spirals, squiggle it. You can even go the other way. It's very similar to the rose. And then as you get bigger, the petals outside are bigger like that. And then you could always add some little leaves if you want to this one. We'll actually show a bit more on little leaves too. But that's kind of a bit more like a ranunculus. Okay, and then the last flower I'm going to show you before we get into like little tiny buds and greenery is a peony, which is one of my favorite. And this, you just have to do some jaggedy kind of petals. So I always kind of start with the bottom one. So let's do kind of like a U shape like this. And at the top, you're just gonna kind of do this like jagged petal. Then again, from the bottom, you're gonna come up and do a jagged petal. From the side, come up, do a jagged petal. Now let's do a couple behind here. Jagged, 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 okay? And then we're gonna do the center. We're gonna have a line and then these little kind of things coming at the center like that. If you would like to do um, maybe a petal falling down, Go like that, jagged edge, jagged edge, jagged edge, jagged edge, like that. And then for the line shading, you're coming from the bottom, you're going with the curve of the petal, bottom, the base of the petal, right, for your line shading. And not too much, I, I don't even think I do any line shading in my um, florals in my bullet journal, like that. And then if you would like to do some big leaves, you can do that too. You can do the stem or the stems, the vein, oh my God. You can do the veins however you want. Like that, okay? So those are kind of the basic florals that I do. And then I'll do a bunch of fillers. So one really quick kind of leaf thing that I like to do, let's do a stem. And then for leaves, I've been going up, down, up, like that. So I'll show you again. I create the stem, come around, do half the leaf, come back up. And I find it's a really easy way to do it. Half, half half, half, and it looks really cute too. Super fast and easy. And if you wanna create a little bit of movement to your leaf, make it like an S curve almost, like a snake. And it just adds a bit of movement. 
okay? You could always make your leaves a bit more rounded too, like eucalyptus by doing the same kind of thing. Make it round like that, shorter and rounder. like that. Actually, another flower that we could do is a hydrangea. And this is also very simple too. Okay, so for a hydrangea, all you're going to do is these kind of squiggly little blobs. Or you can even make it like one, two, three, four, like little clouds. And you're just going to cluster them together. And then you can put a dot in the center of some of them. Okay, and you're just going to do this cluster of little kind of cloud looking flowers. Little dots. Okay, and then once you have the shape that you like for your hydrangea, and you've done a couple of the dots, you can have some more of those big kind of leaves. If you want to do the veins, you can, you don't have to. But that's another great filler flower. We'll do one more leaf like that. Okay, so there's kind of like a hydrangea. Um, let's do maybe some little tiny flowers. Um, we could do some tulips where you just kind of do this petal shape like that. Do a petal shape on the other side. Kind of a base to it. Kind of like a tulip and you can do a couple little lines from the bottom, maybe a little peak at the top. Let's do another one over here. So this kind of like petal shape, petal shape around that the spiky base, and then connect them. That's not actually a tulip, that's more like a little bud. You could do long little leaves, like that. We could do some messy small flowers, so kind of similar to that, just kind of coming out like this. Really does not have to be anything special, like that, and then let's connect them all together. You can do a couple dots in the middle. And then let's add some tiny little leaves. Like that. Let's do one kind of long stalk of flowers. So maybe we could do a line like this and we could just do little flowers coming down. Again, squiggly kind of thing, maybe a bit fuller at the bottom with flowers. Like I'm literally doing squiggles. <laughs> Do some dots in the middle of those flowers. Connect them to the stem a bit more. Do little tiny leaves coming off of it. Like that. Okay, there are so many different types you can do and just fill up your notebooks with them. So those are just a few to practice, but I definitely suggest you do it because they're a lot easier than they look. Okay, so today we are doing February's bullet journal setup. I have not done one of these videos before. I did my first bullet journaling video where I flipped through everything I did for January, um, but not actually how to set it up. You guys were interested in how I was gonna do it, so we're gonna do the video of that today. I am not gonna do it in real time because it does take a long time to do, and that would just be a very long, kind of boring video. So I am gonna kind of speed it up and just talk you through my process. If you didn't see my first bullet journaling video, I am using the Archer and Olive B5 bullet journal. And it just, it's a nice dotted grid notebook, really nice thick paper. Um, other materials I'm gonna be using today, I really love these white Uniball Signo gel pens. I think they're a great staple to have if you are bullet journaling. Um, great for fixing mistakes if you need to, also doing white lettering. I'm gonna be using my Tombow mono drawing pen. I just really like this fine tip drawing pen for all my black writing. Then I am going to be using the Archer and Olive Acrylograph 
paint pens. Um, I did mention these in the last video and for this video I have decided to come up with a, a color palette idea and these are the colors I'm going to be using and I'm also going to be trying a bit of watercolor. I'm not going to be painting like an illustration but using some watercolor for some headers and stuff in my bullet journal. We're going to see how that goes and I don't know maybe some washi tape. I also have my pencil, my eraser, ruler, those are just some of the basic things. Scissors, we're gonna be doing a little Dutch door and we're just gonna see how it goes. I do suggest maybe coming up with a color palette idea for a monthly spread. I think it just looks a little bit better. Um, my first month I came, well, it was kind of like a, a color palette. I went with like blues and stuff and it was okay, but it wasn't really well thought out. I, I didn't love it. So this is what we're working with and we're gonna try and up our game in this video and make it a little bit better. Um, things that I will be doing for this month that I enjoyed last month. I really enjoyed this daily doodle idea. As you can see, I still have two weeks left, uh, but I think I'm gonna be doing that for February. I like my financial log, which I'll be putting here. The cover page for February, because you know, it's Valentine's Day this month. That's about the only thing we have going on. So we're gonna do a heart and some florals because why not? Then I'm gonna have my YouTube and Etsy ideas. You can create yours however you want. I'm using this personally for me because this is what I need it for. And then we're gonna get into our weekly spreads and then the daily doodle at the, the end. But yeah, so if you guys are curious on how I'm gonna set this up, watch now and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the first thing I did was start with the cover page because I figured it would be the most fun to do. Um, I just did a simple heart with my pencil outline and those dot grid pages are great for guidelines to make sure it is even. And then I used my Tombow mono drawing pen in size 01, I believe, maybe 03, um, just to do some simple florals all around the heart. Um, I try not to make or worry about making it too perfect because I feel like you can just draw any kind of squiggly petal looking thing and it looks like a flower, but that's just my opinion. So I just did it all around the heart. I tried to fill it in with different kinds of flowers, different leaves, different sizes, just to make it nice and full. Then I decided to take a Posca pen and fill in the whole middle with black. And Posca pens actually work really, really well on this paper. They do not bleed or ghost through at all. And I just used this really thick tip just so I could, you know, spend less time filling it in. Um, but yeah, I decided on black because I'm a little bit afraid of color. And then I decided to do a Dutch door. So I just used my ruler as a guy line and then cut it out. And I used some green washi tape on that front cover and then the page behind. So once you close it, it kind of all looks as one page. Then I decided to take some watercolor. I mixed some Hooker's Green Dark and some turquoise just to do a header of a small little monthly calendar at the bottom to refer to instead of the first future log page. And then I wrote the numbers because that's what you do with a calendar. <laughs> And then I wrote the word February, filling up that whole heart. Um, I thought it was a kind of a cool look. I took my white Signo um, gel pen from Uniball and I just went over the letters and I left a little bit of black space in the middle. Not sure why. I didn't know if I was gonna fill it in with white or whatever, but I ended up using an acrylograph um, dark red pen to fill in that middle and it didn't actually end up showing up all that much. Um, but it was like the tiniest pop of color, which I was, I was totally cool with just experimenting. And then I used those same acrylograph pens from our journal of, to do some little bit of florals. I was, I was afraid of adding too much color. I was thinking about maybe doing it with watercolor, but I feel like it would warp the paper too much. So I just wanted to add little pops of color, little tiny florals around just to give it something. Um, but I didn't want to overwhelm the piece too, too much. So it was just a little bit of color in the color palette that I had chosen. Okay, so next I started to work on my financial log. And as you can see, I started to use watercolor for the little backgrounds of headings and stuff, which I really liked the way that looked. So I just wrote financial log in the colors of the color palette that I had, again, using watercolor for those headers. 
um, I created that dusty pink using permanent rose and a little bit of hooker's green dark. Um, and this is how I set up my last financial log and I just figured it worked. It's just something for me to keep track. And then I put a big purchase tracker because like I said, I think last time we're getting our basement done. I just wanted to keep track of anything that I'm spending. I just find it really, really helps me. And I'm able to look back and see what I've actually spent my money on. But I find using those little like extra details like that arrow and that like box where I was going to put the monthly income, little details like that end up looking really good on these spreads. You just kind of got to keep adding some detail. So next I wanted to work on my ideas page, which I also did last month. This is a big thing that I've always wanted in my planners because this is where I write down all my ideas of YouTube tutorials and Etsy ideas for the month. And again, just using the same color palette, using that little rosy pink and then that dark kind of burgundy red really makes it pop. And basically that's all I did for this page, just to make room for all the ideas I'm gonna have over the month. And then it was time to work on my weekly spread. So I just count out 10 spaces evenly across so I could do three spaces for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then below Thursday, Friday. I don't need a ton of space for my weeks, um, but I just did the outline in black, that mono drawing pen, and then I used, again, the watercolor for the headers. I just really liked the way it looked. And then I did a little bit of like leaf and floral detail. I feel like I could have done more, but I, at this point I was getting lazy to be quite honest. Um, but again, just using the same color palette and then using that pink color to write over top of the headers. I feel like that could have been a bit more dark. I think I'll have to do it again just to make it pop out just a bit more. And then I use the acrylograph pens to draw little hearts of where I'm gonna write the day of the week and it's just an extra little something to add that I thought looked really cute. Then because there's only four weeks in this month, I only had to do one more page for the next two weeks and I actually ended up liking this color palette that I came up with a lot more and I just did the exact same thing that I did on the last page. This time mixing permanent rose, a little bit of hooker's green dark, and a little bit of dioxazine purple to get this really nice deep burgundy color. Really love this color palette of this page. It might be my favorite page for this month. And as you can see, I'm kind of doing it messily and I just wanted to give this like kind of messy watercolor vibe to these headings and I think it looks really cute. And then I just added a few more little floral details in the ideas boxes. Um, and that's it. Those are my weekly spreads. They're very simple and they look really cute. One thing I loved about my January spread was that daily doodle idea. So I am going to do one for this month going along with my color palette. So I used washi tape on the side and on the bottom just to kind of frame it. And then this is actually a really easy month to do it because there are only 28 days. So you can do four rows of seven and it works out perfectly. And I think I just counted out eight little spaces up and eight spaces across. So they're perfect little squares and it fit really nicely in this book. So then I decided to write daily doodles in cursive and I used some faux calligraphy um, to make it look fancier and if you don't know what faux calligraphy is it's just not actually doing calligraphy you're just making all the downstrokes a bit thicker so it looks like it is calligraphy and then I wrote the word February in block letters just three spaces width across for each letter so they all look kind of nice and cohesive and they go well together and that was it so I decided to actually outline the daily doodle word just to make it pop a bit more as well and then I think I added on the side just like a little favorite memories box so I can write down anything that I really liked about this month wrote the numbers and I think that was about it so there you go there is our February setup we have our financial log on the left hand side our February cover page our ideas page which you can use for whatever is going on in your life our easy and simple weekly spreads which are nice and kind of minimal but classy looking and then our daily doodle so i think that's about it thank you all so much for watching my video i really hope you liked it and i hope you learned something don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram for even more have a great day guys bye